You can't have one without the other. Love and marriage. Love and marriage. So we're back. Just us, though. Let the record show. I am Tiffany. Shoot the bullet. Must you bring that up in today's time? It's perfect for today's time. Today's time that we're in. Yeah. How was your day? My day was good. My day's always good. Oh, that's great. How was your day? I was busy. Mm. I was super busy. I didn't say I wasn't busy. I said my day's good. Mm-hmm. That's how my day was. I was busy and doing things. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. So what are we talking about? Um. We always like to talk about the drama. Well, we can talk about your girl. Who's my girl? Monique. Oh, poor baby. And her rant, I guess you could say. Yeah. So Monique had a a show that she was supposed to be headlining. Yeah, in Detroit. In Detroit. And apparently things didn't go the way it she sounded saw fit. Like a promoter problem? Yeah. Like basically it's like if I owned a thing and I told you you'd be the headliner. Mm-hmm. But then I told Cheryl she could be the headliner too. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, well, I ain't going on after Cheryl. Right. Or before Cheryl. Oh, before Cheryl. I'm going on after. Yeah. And Cheryl was like, well, well his mama is this and his, his his wife is that. He can't read well. That's what Cheryl did. Yeah. And Cheryl brought in some other stuff. Because it wasn't just about the show. Oh. Well, the backstory was that she was on his radio show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And was it um, I, I imagine it was probably in to promote the uh That's a the good question. Show? I'm not sure if it was to promote it or not. Like I, I that wouldn't come up. On his radio show? If you yeah, if y'all like, got a oh, show we, together. They, yeah, they should. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Memorial Day weekend. Be there or be square. Right, right, You know. But I guess maybe not you going on first, I'm going on. You know what I'm saying? Of course, that type of stuff. That's that's what you hire people for. Yeah, that's true. You know, to work out the particulars. Um, but on the show, towards the end of the show, I guess things got what she deemed disrespectful. Yes, it was a would you rather conversation. Like, a, you know, you play the game. Like, would you rather... Yeah. But it, it, would you rather eat cake while sitting on a penis or sit on a penis while eating cake? I don't think it was that type of question. It was. I don't think it was two things backwards. It was two separate things. It was the, It was the same thing. It, they asked if would you rather her husband sleep with Lee Daniels with no condom mm-hmm. or sleep with Corinne Steph- Superhead Corinne Stephens with, with a condom that's not the same thing it's the same thing that is not the same thing it is thing. the same thing it's the inappropriateness of it okay, okay. that's what I mean okay. it's the same inappropriate yeah, she felt a way about and, that. Well, you came for her man's sexuality. And I don't know what this man's sexuality is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I mean. It offended her. It it did offend. If offend. But I will say this. I thought, the, I thought about this a little deeper. And I was wondering if you as a man. A married man, Mm -hmm. one would say, playing that whole would you rather game, Mm -hmm. right? And, you know, someone brings up 
so a similar scenario. You know what I'm saying? Like, would you rather your wife, you know, sleep with? I, I don't know. The same thing. Yeah, the the the, the equivalent mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. It's not equivalent, but. <laughs> it is equivalent, but anyways, it, would you, would you be that offended by it? That's what I'm wondering. Like, would you be that like? Because I'm thinking more hit dog is hollering, uh, more than, more than it being a a situation where it was like, oh, the question was just so offensive. I, mean, I don't know necessarily if the question was offensive or you feel like they was trying to pull your car. Like they know the inner workings of stuff. We, yeah. we, 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 um, public don't know. Or like, you know, Professor Ogilvie or something, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Or it could be a thing where it's something that, um, has gotten thrown in her face before, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, sometimes when you you caught in the beginning of something, you not you caught off guard, so you don't really react to it. But once you get a chance to stew on it, you like, you know what? The next time somebody do some stuff like that, I'm a whoop de wop wop de wop. Well, no, or you may have a better uh, response to it, or you should be used to it. People coming for that. If you're securing your relationship, what is there to get upset about? No, I feel you. Like, honestly, somebody coming at me saying that, would you rather your husband, you know, sleep with Lee Daniels or, you know. Right. You just be like, neither. What is this? What? What we doing here? It wouldn't wouldn't make it to a point. But I, um, I wonder if it's more of that. I don't know. It could, that could just be the cherry on top. Like the whole... The whole promoter situation and who going on last. But that happened afterwards. The promoter situation was after. That's what I'm saying. That could have been the the promoter situation could have been the straw that broke the camel. Broke the camel's back. Whereas this was just like something else. Something else. And then the promoter thing happened. Because from what I understand, that type of thing be happening all the time in the comedy game. That type of. Promoters be messing up. I mean, yeah, I, I hear but what there's I'm saying a movie is that's called not a huge thing. Janky Promoters. Literally, exactly. there's a movie about it. So, I mean, and granted, all movies aren't. I mean, but it's it's derived from somewhere. But I'm saying that's not a thing. That's not that's a normal thing. That's not a. And being that they're veterans in the comedy game, I'm pretty sure. That's a normal thing. Now, it's not that it happens all the time. And to not her. that it's cool. Right. I'm not saying it's cool either. But for to do that, I don't know. She always ends up, she may be right in her, like, in her feelings about black women not getting paid properly and the fact that she's not getting respected properly with what they should pay her as a veteran in the game, excuse me, and the disrespect that she gets for being a black woman. It's not that she does it. It's how she does. It. It's always how. Like no one cares when you nasty. Yeah, like when you nasty. Like no one can. Like at that point, they just they can't even see what you're saying has value because you're so nasty. Yeah, like it. It just you could be telling the truth, but because yes. it's so nasty, it's nasty. It's the trash can. Yep. The you presentation. Got a course meal on a trash can. can. Yeah. Top lid. Yeah. It's the presentation. Yeah. And but that what I'm matters. Saying is, though, she may have ate the whole husband thing. Like, <laughs> okay. And then the promoter thing happened, and she was like, "You know what? I'm sick of this. I'm about to let DL have it." And then he tried what? to play me yesterday, and then and I let it ride. Right, but now, what but you, but she still was nasty. Right, but I'm saying, but now that she's done this, now what? I don't know. She just flew off the handle like she'd be doing, which is why women need handlers. Oh. See, I'm gonna speak up for all the men. No, you, you be quiet. See this? <laughs> nah. She she probably just had an emotional moment like she be having. 
Yeah, she has them a lot though. Yeah, and, and it and it and it kind of like reveals a real nasty side of her. And like I don't want her out there as a representative of what oh, we're like. Late. It's too late. I d- like I'm, I I I don't do that. It's too late. Like I I I've been wronged. I'm not a comedian, but I've been wronged by people in using gasoline to put out a fire. It never works. Yeah. It just makes it bigger. It just I. Yeah. <sighs> she just so Poor nasty. Baby. And I, you know, and and I knew eventually when I saw it happen, I knew we were going to talk about it. So what I did was I went back and watched some comedy specials just to see if I would laugh. And the sad thing is, I can't find none of hers. They are nowhere. Oh, you can't find none of her specials. None of them. I can't find them. Where are they? That might be because she probably got the rights to them. You know what I'm saying? And she can't get nobody to lease them from for a little bit. Just put them on Hulu or something. You know what I'm saying? She That's might what not I... want to. Why? She ain't got no money. How you know what she got in her pocket? She touring. You don't tour because for fun. You Dave tour because you need the money. Dave touring. He ain't broke. You don't know what that man is. Man, ain't none of these guys broke. It's... You you perfecting your craft and you're gonna make some money. Why not do that? Do you think DL Hughley is funny? There's a reason that Bernie Mac went on last on Kings of Comedy. Agreed. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I think DL Hughley is one of them dudes that He like he Dave, be talking. He like Dave Chappelle to me. He be trying it's to not, get deep about stuff. Right. It's not like. And he make valid points. B- right. But it's like, for me, it's like, man, I ain't come here for that. He's like. Um, I came to laugh. He put the candy in or the medicine in with the candy. That's what he do. And that's and genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very, you know, um. It's thought provoking and interesting and stuff like that. Like Dave Chappelle, like I don't know if I necessarily laugh, but I'm like, huh, he's right. <laughs> no, nah, Dave Chappelle way better than D.L. Hughley though. Oh, okay. But it's a similar type of approach. Like a style. Yeah, it's kind of like um, like George Carlin too. You know, but Cat Williams gives me the perfect amount of like slap leg funny. And thought-provoking stuff. He'll he, go overboard. He gives me a good combination of both. He has some very smart comedy too, but then he's able to deliver it in a way that's like, ha! <laughs> he got a good balance on the mic. Yeah, it's a good balance. Yeah. Some of these guys they go overboard with certain stuff. I don't know if it's overboard. It's kind of like what you probably can produce. I don't know if it's a, you know it may not be overboard. It's just what you can do. Yeah. I mean, that's a, to to me is overboard. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to. I don't want too much of this. I don't want too much of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, Monique, she she just gotta learn to take a deep breath before she go and do this type of stuff. I wonder if anybody like I don't know what her team consists of. Her I husband know. and who else? Oh, okay. And probably her lawyers. That's he it. is her lawyer, right? I don't think so. I think he's a manager. Oh, okay. I don't know. Don't get me a line about that girl, man. Oh, uh, it's just sad to see. I. D- but my thing is this: is my issue with Monique. She does this on one hand, but then in the other hand, she be calling herself schooling and and reprimanding the young ladies that's coming behind her. For wearing the bonnets and doing this and doing that and acting like this, but then you you just got up on the stage and, and was showed your all the all the ass. mfers and all of that. Show joy and sit down somewhere. Ass. You can't say nothing. Yeah, well, I mean, I know everybody has that moment, but at this Hers point in her career, so much. she shouldn't it's, be having these moments. It happens so much. That's what I'm saying. And it's not like she hasn't learned yet. A lot of times, uh, you f- sometimes it feels like people get put into situations 
where their backs pushed up against a wall she's always kind of gave you the ammunition to shoot at her like nobody was really not che- not that they're not checking for her but no one was putting her in the boat to say you know what and F Tyler Perry and F him and like yeah she just went off on her own tangent yeah like I don't publicly though yeah it's one thing if she in a private room where these things be happening at mm-hmm. and she do her thing we don't know nothing about, about it, it. we may hear about it yeah but she be going be like I heard public... it's almost like she do excuse me it's almost like she do it like a uh, to try to weaponize her voice you know what I'm saying like, all right, I'm going I'm to use this tactic to fight against them. And it's like, nah, man, that's and not so really I, working for you. And so with these volatile relationships, you know, that we've been seeing lately in Hollywood, it's like, would your spouse that loves you allow you to keep letting yourself be portrayed like this? Man, she got his nuts and a jaw on the mantle at the house. He ain't saying nothing to her. Who? Her husband. I feel like he behind it. He put the battery in her back. He might be. I don't know. I, I doubt it. I think she run that house. I doubt it. Not the way she that. call him daddy. No. I mean. That's weird. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. She, she got a lot going on, I man. I don't really feel like that. I don't want to. She got a lot going on. She got. She always got a lot going on. Yeah. And it comes out every time she has these moments. She may need to just lay it on down. Oh, I'm sure she needs to lay it down. Yeah, she needs to lay but it on down. But laying it down will, might end up ruining some of the stuff that she likes to do in her lifetime, in yeah. her life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the relationship that she has with her husband. It could. So she, she, she probably ain't trying to lay it down like that. Yeah. Poor baby. Being nasty. Mm. Poor yeah. baby. Yeah. It's a sad situation because, like you said, you know, somebody see it and be like, see? <laughs> I told see? you we shouldn't have signed it. The, 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 all, these uh, ang- all of them angry. Yes. And nasty. That's all of them. Yep. That's how they all are. Mm-hmm. I mean, it don't have no bearing on on Viola Davis, you know what I'm saying, or you know, Angela <laughs> Bassett or nothing like that. But still, yeah, it just or the people at Netflix board meeting, like what I tell you, yeah. she was worth the one whatever they, you yeah. know. Yeah. Ain't nobody watching her special after this, you know that type of thing. Yeah. I mean, she's accomplished though. I was thinking about that. I was like, man, you know what? She is probably one of the the most accomplished entertainers, female, black female entertainers out there. Really? I don't know. I got to do some research on that. What do you mean by accomplished? I don't, I don't know another comedian. Com- right? Okay. Or comedic actor that has an Oscar. Granted, she got it for playing a nasty role, but she has one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it did nothing for her career. Well, she a black woman in Hollywood. Viola Davis got damn near all the awards, and she's still getting paid less than you name it. Whoopi Goldberg has a... Uh, oh, Whoopi up there, too. Whoopi up there, too. That's considered an Academy Award, right? Yeah. Okay. Whoopi is definitely up there. But Whoopi. that's what I'm saying. And Jamie... You talking about women? Yeah, after Whoopi Goldberg... You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Let me see. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So she's she's accomplished. Yeah. And she, you know, she was a, a queen of comedy. Yeah, I think some more. I, I would, you know, I'm not going to sit here and lie. I never watched the Parkers. Um, that was a long-running show. It was. I never watched that. I, I, I've never really been a fan of hers yeah. like that. Um, I've always liked some more. That's one of my favorite. Ain't never fa- had no show though. I know, but she's always been one of my favorite comedians. So yeah, some more is good. Um, but f- one of my favorite female comedians, and I never. I was trying to look up Monique stuff to figure out like what <clears throat> I liked mm. her in. 
Mm. Um. What about um? Or was it just a movie? That little Christmas movie. Uh, it, had, it, uh, it was an ensemble cast. Like yeah. you can't really. Can you count that? I mean, did she do her job in there? I mean, yeah, she did her job. She, you know, she gave you some funny. What was the name of that movie? Almost Christmas. Almost Christmas. Yeah. Don't even it that. is right. You never trust me, boy. This Christmas. No, that's the one with Chris Brown. Oh. Nah, that wasn't in there. It's something Christmas. I'm telling you, almost Christmas. Okay, I believe you. But yeah, she did her job in that. Yes, I was right. Almost Christmas. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. I be knowing. I be knowing. Yeah. He don't want to give me my props, but I be knowing. What else was she in? Man, she been in some stuff. Don't do her like that. Um, she has? You going to look up some stuff? Because the Parkers. Man, hold on. Let me see. What's and up? the game. I say, oh, excuse me. Mm. That was, so let me tell y'all the backstory on this. We recording this off the late night. Mm. Damn. I be, I be, I be sleep, you know, early, normally, but I'm up tonight. I ain't hear nothing yet. Hold on, getting it together. Why are you saying dang? She was in three strikes. Two can play at that, two can play that game. Oh, she sure was her friend. She was Vivica's friend. Soul Plane. Nope. Hair Show. Nope. Domino. Nope. Fat girls. I remember that. Oh, welcome home, Roscoe Jenkins. She was she was. Oh, in that she joint. was good with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She did a little thing in there. Did precious. Almost Christmas. I don't know what Blackbird is. In. I heard Bessie was pretty good. That was the joint with Queen Latifah. Oh. Queen La. Then you know she had the Moesha. She was. Oh, she was on an episode of the Hughleys. It was all the same network, though, wasn't it? UPN? Yeah, Probably something so. like that. It sounded like it was. I'm not sure. She voiced on the Proud Family, Bernie Mac show, and then she had her show, The Parkers. That's five seasons, mm-hmm. 10 episodes. That's syndication. It should be. She was on Girlfriends. She was? Yeah, she, said she Oh, was she was. Her, she so. did like an episode or two. Yeah. It was maybe just one episode. So she was on the game too, as a That's plus what, size actress. Yeah, she was. That's why I said before I was like she was on the game. Oh, okay. But it was like one episode. Then she had her own show. Oh the yeah, Monique show. the little late late night talk show. How long did that last? I don't know. Uh, two seasons, two hundred fifty one episodes. That ain't bad. Two hundred fifty one ep- Oh, because it was nightly. Mm-hmm. Mm. That ain't, that ain't a bad run. Oh, from oh nine to two thousand eleven. But yeah, I think she's 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 she stepped on her own toes with the uh after she won that Academy Award and started fake flexing on people with the nastiness. Yeah. Know? Or at least it seemed that way. She could have been that way all along. We just never knew. Yeah, that's true. And too. I was okay with not knowing. Yeah. Well, it is what it is, you know. She exposed who she is all the time. Yeah. Some people don't want her to support that. No. Uh-uh. What she should have done, she should have got on the stage and was like, shoot the bullet. Do you want to tell them about your son? Hmm? <sighs> So in my busy day today, I get a call from um, my principal of the school with my son on speakerphone. (laughs) Apparently he said something inappropriate in school and they were concerned. So they had to call the parent. So I get on the phone with him and I'm like, you know, hey, what's up? You know, everything okay? He was like, I, it just, what, I, what I said, it just kind of popped in my mind. And I, you know, I don't know why I said it. I just did. And I was like, well, what did you say? Shoot the bullet. And I was like, 
Okay. He was like, and I did gesture, you know, and do the, the hand gun thing Ooh. too, shoot the bullet. So I was like, well, what were you trying to do? Like, was the teacher, was the teacher teaching or like, what were you trying to do? He was like, oh no, she had stopped. She was quiet. I said, so the room was quiet and you just decided to yell, shoot the bullet. And he was like, I mean, I really didn't yell. I just said it. And I was like, okay, so you do know that's inappropriate, right? He was like, yeah. And I was like, and everything that comes to your head does not mean you need to say it out loud. He was like, yeah, I know. It just kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't mean anything by it. And I was like, yeah, I know. I know you didn't. So then at that point, I'm on speaker, so the principal chimes in. He was like, and I've already kind of had a discussion with him about appropriate language and why that could be sensitive to these day and times. He was saying, you know, when I was young, this is the principal talking, when I was young, I was able to say words, kill, and death. But these days, um, the language, that type of language is not, you know, tolerated or whatever. Mind you, we just had a mass shooting, what, last week? Yes. In an elementary school. Yeah. So I imagine people are on edge, and I get that. Um, but he... And I haven't even really discussed... I don't know. I I was thinking of discussing this whole mass shooting with my elementary school children, but I really just hadn't I didn't have the ability to sit down and talk to them to give them the words of why somebody would do that and crazy the, people out right here. the minds like I just didn't so I didn't talk to them about it and I didn't want to strike fear with school either mm-hmm. so I just didn't talk about it but needless to say I mean, there was I, there was nothing really I could do. All I told the the principal at the end of the call was that you know his dad and I'll talk to him about appropriate language to use in school, mm-hmm. and I kind of left it at that. But when he came home, I did talk to him about not only the language he uses at school, but the language he uses as a black man. Like he's a black little boy. And at some point in time, he's not going to be considered cute anymore. He's going to be considered dangerous. So he has to monitor the things that comes out of his mouth. We had that discussion today. He felt like he understood. The funniest thing that he said in the conversation was when I said, white people can perceive you as a threat. He said, we should be scared of them. based on what they've done to us and I was like you're right you're right but but we're not scared though you don't need to be scared of nobody (laughs) (laughs) but it could be perceived that way and I just want you to be aware I was like I don't want you to treat anybody different based on this I was like you treat people how they treat you and I was like and just keep keep on moving I was like but you need to know these things because you're getting older and life's different as you get older. Everything's not as cute anymore. But I did have the thought like, is, would that been, ha- if there was more of his own surrounding him in school, mm-hmm. would that been a call home? Oh, nah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it probably would have, but it just, it would have been more so about reprimanding him versus, hey, you can't say that these days. It would have been more so about, he's he's causing a disruption. Oh, like he can't just be yelling in class. Yeah. But he wasn't yet, like it wasn't a constant. So that wasn't a real disruption. That's no different than the kid yelling, like, but like crap. he was, te- yes, like he was telling me, like, some kind of times the kids be talking about balls. 
and stuff in class. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, they talk about balls. Ain't nobody calling home about that. Right. And he said, you know, when that happens, People be like, <laughs> you know, like snicker or laugh or, mm. you know, there, there's some shock and awe to the word balls when the boys talk about it in class. Mm -hmm. And so that's a disruption to class. <laughs> <laughs> that's a disruption to class. But this, I'm, this didn't seem like it was a dis disruption because it wasn't like he kept saying it over and over again to where the teacher couldn't teach or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I think it may, no matter where you are in this day and age, I think. Because of what just happened. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. like, oh man, we can't just let that ride. Yeah, you can't. But I mean. Even if it's not a call home right then in that moment, it might be a email or something, yeah. some type of reach out like, hey, so this it. happened today. Just making you aware. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. Just because of the times. That's all. Yeah. My man said, shoot the bullet. Shoot the bullet. He said it It didn't come from anywhere. It just popped in my head. And I, was I like, wonder what he was thinking about. Me too. You know what I'm saying? Was he thinking about something he saw or something, you know? And yeah. You know, shoot the bullet. Mm-hmm. Because we haven't talked about the shooting at all in this house, for real. Mm -mm. So I just don't know where it came from. It could have came from anywhere. This guy, how his mind works. Yeah, you always thinking about something. Yeah, so it's very much possible that it came from out of the clear blue sky. Yeah. It's very much possible. But it was just... And mind you, this has been a year of calls for me <laughs> with this specific child. <laughs> this has been the year of calls. I've never been called so much. I think every teacher has called me. Like, you know, you have the the specialty teachers, your art, your PE, your music. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, French. Those type of teachers. And I've heard from the art, the music, his main teacher... The assistant principal and the principal. <laughs> <laughs> what a good year has it been. It's great. It might be my fault. <laughs> well, I'm giving you your number. My number not going to be the first number no more. Your number is a safer number. Why? You're more tactful than I am when those types of things happen. You really, I really am, because you'd be like, so? Send them back to class. <laughs> Call me. I'm at work. <laughs> Call me with this mess. <laughs> oh, what you going to do then? Is, do I need to come get them? All right, then. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's good stuff. Take it back to the old school, man. What's the old school? I don't know. Let the kids be free. Do their thing. You know what I'm saying? No. These kids are different. They don't even go outside if the air quality is different. I know. I was like, when they just start doing that? Yeah. Is that just where we are? Do y'all kids Do not that go outside, outside when the air quality is isn't sufficient? Like the, I mean, I guess it's not a bad thing no, if I'm you just think saying, about it. That was it. the first time I ever heard that. Me too. I was like, well, yeah, we didn't go outside. And I was like, why not? It's like, because it's something with the air. The air, the air quality. quality was bad. And it was. Like, if you looked at the weather that yeah. day, the air quality was bad. But I never thought it would mess up outdoor recess. I wonder if it was the teacher's call or if it was all, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the teacher may have been like, we ain't going out there today. I mean, they very well could do that. Can they, though? Yeah, they long as they give them some type of recess indoors, fine. Oh, that's foul. They nah, can wear, man. They, it's no law that says they gotta go they outside for recess. It's other kids out there playing, and you like, we ain't going out there today. Well, I'm pretty sure they did it for the whole school. I'm that's sure. what I'm saying. Was it the teacher's call or was it the school's call or was it the principal's call? Either that's what way, I'm it's still a teacher that nah, made the decision. Nah, it's different from the principal deciding. I right, nobody at school going out on recess versus fourth grade teacher Miss Smith like you know what we ain't going out there y'all <laughs> hey but my friend so and so outside I'm trying to play some basketball I'm no, the pretty, air quality is I'm pretty, bad today I'm pretty sure knowing my children if that was the case we would have heard about it like that's there true. was some kids out there but they didn't go we would have heard about it that's true that's they, they would have could not wait to get home to tell us that's true that that's what happened all right, well, 
think we're gonna wrap it up, y'all. Yeah. Remember, if y'all got any uh, questions or anything y'all want us to talk about, let us know. Leave it in the comments section. Send us an email. Follow us at at, at have kids. They said what is it? Have underscore kids. They, they said. said. Yep. Follow us there. Yeah. We do like more content about, you know, our day to day with the kids. We trying to do more. Yeah. Our day to day with the kids and our weekends and soccer tournaments. Oh my God, real quick before we go. Real quick. We are always doing too much. That is like our family mantra. We do too much. <laughs> we decided to have a Memorial Day cookout. Mm. This weekend, right? Our son plays on two to- two soccer teams. One of his soccer teams, of course, had a tournament this weekend. It's not the more aggressive soccer team. So, put it this way. There's a soccer team that plays serious, and there's a soccer team that plays for fun. This was for the soccer team that plays for fun. So, we assumed that... So the, we okay. assumed that the tournament wasn't going to go for two days, right? How soccer tournaments usually work is you're guaranteed to play the first day of the tournament, like two games, right? And based on how you do in those first two games determines if you come back the next day, right? So we assumed that they weren't going to put a lot of effort into doing well those that first we hoped, day. We hoped that they would play how they normally play and we wouldn't have to be out there all day the second day. So of course we were wrong. So this was Saturday, right? They played well Saturday um, and then our cookout was on Sunday. No, 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 no. They won one. They won their first game. Oh, and then yes. they lost their second one. Right. Which was why we was like, okay, we should be so good. good. Good because um, normally, and also with that, it's not just how you play. It's how the other teams play too. Mm-hmm. And it's a point scale. It's it's a whole thing. Yeah. But anyways, they we got notice at like 6 o'clock Saturday night that they had a game, 9 a.m., Sunday Sunday morning morning. so we was like bet that's what's up we can go they can play hard and we can come back home and get ready for the cookout which was supposed to start at three right we get there at nine and they play their hearts out beat the team what five to zero yeah of course beat the brakes off them boys so we had to go back at one for the championship game. And when I tell you, that was the worst. We get there at one. The team, the game before us was running behind, so they didn't start playing until 1.30. Yep. <clears throat> they played pretty good. They didn't play their best, but they played pretty good. Its score ended up being one to one. In tournaments, they can't allow the games to end like that. It has to be a winner. So they had a kickoff or penalty, what kicks. Penal, penalty kicks. PK. And literally, they went through the whole damn team on both sides <laughs> to get to. <laughs> to get a winner. To get a winner. Yeah. So we did not get home till about mm, closer, like almost three o'clock, where, when that was the time that the cookout was supposed to start. Yeah. Luckily, we did some prepping and did some cooking and stuff before. Mm-hmm. Between that 9 a.m. and 1 o'clock window, yeah. between that game, we rushed home and did some grilling and salads and stuff together, got that together. Well, when I tell you Monday, when Monday came, the whole house was tired, like the whole house. We did like everyone got up in the morning and then around 1, maybe 2, the whole house went quiet. Everybody was asleep and naps. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody had a nap. My point is, you don't have to do too much. I, we, we do too much. We had no business. If he had a soccer tournament, we shouldn't have hosted nothing. Mm, that's what you would have done differently. Yeah, we should. We should have. We should have known better. Mm. We should have known better. Like, we only can host stuff when we really have nothing to do. 
I mean, but it was great though. Was the party fun. was we had a good time. Yeah, it, was it was a fun. ball. Yeah. We had a good, good, good time. It was great. Shout out to Ox God. I know, right? <laughs> We're gonna put that game down in the, the the description. We're gonna put that game. It was really fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was it. I just wanted to tell that quick story. So my my moral of today's episode is don't too don't do too much, Monique. See? Learn from us. Let's let the record show that sometimes you just need to sit your ass down. Down and be quiet. Just don't relax. do too much, Monique. You don't have to. We could have sat our asses you go, down after that tournament. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> but then you end up sleepy or yeah. looking like a crazy woman. You don't yeah. want to look like that. Yeah. That's all I was saying. That's the moral of the story. We out. I like how you do your little deuce up. You think you're think you cool, don't you? I am cool. You be like... I am cool. Like a little, <laughs> little bird. <laughs>